An intense investigation is underway into a police-involved shooting that happened earlier this afternoon. I'm Altavis Munnings. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the police commissioner explained exactly what happened. Plus, Dr. Rollins speaks out yet again. And the Bahamas is on alert for Ebola, but takes steps to keep it out of the country. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. An apparent break-in ending deadly for a suspect. Good evening, I'm Opal Roach. And I'm Candino Knowles. Well, police were called to Eastern New Providence this morning about a break-in that concerned several residents there. Now, we understand that police didn't offer much details on the scene. Instead, they called a press conference led by Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade hours after the shooting, which left Prince Charles blocked off for some time. At that press conference today was Altavis Munnings, and she joins us live with the latest on this homicide. Alto? Well, Candino, Police Commissioner Greenslade maintains that this is a very sensitive case, and he, is, he and his officers are very concerned that the life of a young man has been lost. However, a very active investigation into today's alleged break-in is underway. It was shortly after 11 o'clock Thursday morning when police learned about a break-in on Springfield Road near Commonwealth Bank's Prince Charles Drive branch. Concerned citizens informed authorities who arrived on the scene moments later about a suspected vehicle with three men inside. The men apparently failed to stop when ordered to do so by police. A chase then ensued that led officers to a bushy area on the southern side of Prince Charles Drive. The officer leading the pursuit a police inspector reported that the assailant turned upon him with a knife, attempting to stab him. The officer fired a single shot from his police-issued revolver, sorry, police-issued service pistol, hitting the suspect in the head. The suspect fell with his knife still clutched in his hand, and of course, immediately, emergency medical services uh, were summoned. The medical personnel responded to the scene, met the suspect in situ where he fell, untouched, and of course rendered the necessary uh, em emergency medical attention or care to him. The suspect was taken to hospital, uh, still alive, and an hour later we were notified that the suspect succumbed to the injury that he received as a result of the gunshot. Uh, injury or wound. Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade also confirmed at his Thursday afternoon press conference that the suspect was on bail for armed robbery and wore an electronic monitoring bracelet. Also in police custody as a result of this incident are two men ages 23 and 27 years old, the car, and suspected stolen items. The commissioner also confirmed the victim's family is presently meeting with detectives on this case. If officers are on the front lines duly authorized by law, in full possession of, of properly issued firearms, and the law gives them justification, I'm prepared to tell you, again, police officers will execute their duties. I've said to the wider public, you cannot attack a police officer with an edge tool, with a dangerous weapon, with an illegal gun, and expect that a police officer is going to retreat and allow you to take control of the Bahamas. That is not going to happen. I'm not prepared to be mean-spirited or to prejudice the current case. We are very sensitive to the fact that a life has been lost, a young life has been lost, and that is not an issue that I take lightly. And once again, police credit tips from the public in this investigation. There are far too many good citizens of the Bahamas, um, more so citizens in New Providence, who are fed up with the amount of times that the sanctity of their homes have been defiled, and that while we continue to speak about very, very serious crimes as we perceive it, and we speak to the issue of murders, and we speak to other serious crimes, many, far too many persons are very disturbed that no attention is being paid. They perceive by the wider public, by the press, 
and by all of us in our daily discourse about the invasion of their privacy, the defilement of the sanctity of their homes, and how vulnerable they feel as decent, hardworking citizens, um, and its repeat victimization. Commissioner Greenslade confirmed that the matter will be fully investigated and transferred to Her Majesty's coroner in the quickest possible time. And if you have any information that can assist police with this matter, you're urged to contact your nearest police station as soon as possible. Reporting live from the newsroom at Maltavis Munnings is NS Network News. All right, thanks a lot, Alto. Well, Police Commissioner Greenslade also revealing more information on that man who died in custody at the Wolf Road Police Station this past Saturday. The man, we're told, was initially arrested after a business owner filed a complaint to police that the man was unauthorized to be on his property. Commissioner Greenslade confirmed that the man is still being referred to as John Doe as no one has come forward to officially identify him. Left in situ, meaning left undisturbed. At the time, there were a number of independent witnesses in that cell block. Sensible Bahamians who saw precisely what had happened prior to the alarm being sounded that something was wrong in the cell block. Her Majesty's coroner responded, and from the point that Her Majesty's coroner, coroner was summoned and, and arrived, that investigation has turned to Her Majesty's coroner. We will have, with the full concurrence of the medical authorities and, the, and certainly the authority of the coroner, to clean up the facial area of the deceased and to have a picture taken and circulated. It's going to be rather difficult, but it's the only means that we have now in hopes that the public will come forward and identify the person. In news from Parliament, Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie saying that the unkept condition of the airport gateway is a vexing problem for his government. He also noted that the cleanup of the gateway was subcontracted to a Bahamian group through the China Construction Company. Well, Prime Minister Christie stood to defend government after Member of Parliament for Fort Charlotte Dr. Andre Rollins blasted government for not maintaining the corridor, which he says is an eyesore. Mr. Christie says a contract was signed under the former administration. For ourselves, we have been in discussions up to 24 hours ago with the Chinese because we are aware Mr. Speaker, from a contractual point of view, there are residual monies left in the contract. We are greatly concerned, but it appears that the contract was never ever for a full landscaping um, job. So it's not a question of um, whether or not the People's Republic of China has an inordinate sway over the government of the Bahamas or we've surrendered um, our rights to protect the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Now, the Prime Minister says he has advised the Deputy Prime Minister, Philip Davis, to begin removing garbage that has collected along the verges, and that he said he should have started, or which he said should have started Tuesday, despite the contract. Now, he says government has urged the Chinese to rectify the situation with regard to the existing subcontract and expects a favorable outcome soon. Mr. Rollins blasted government for allowing the corridor to become overrun with weeds and questioned if the Chinese are running the country. This after Labor Minister the Honorable Shane Gibson said maintenance was the responsibility of China Construction Company as the gateway had not been turned over to government. Speaker, I ask the member of Golden Gates through you, who is running this country? The People's Republic of China or the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas? Because no way can I sit in here as an elected member of this house and hear somebody tell me that it is up to the People's Republic of China and DNT construction to ensure that this government looks good. No, sir. Not a day like it. And you know, Mr. Speaker, we have to remember that we are the ones who are responsible for governing this country. Now, the Fort Charlotte MP also shared his views on the Renwood Wells Stella Waste matter again. He said he knew of nothing corrupt with regards to the letter of intent, but suggested that something else could have been amiss. He's been used as a pawn because there are those who do, in fact, want to take the leadership away from the right honorable member for Senator. And Mr. Speaker, I let the right honorable member for Senator know this, and he is my leader. I could not come into politics were it not for him. Can I say this to my right honorable member? The leader of the party I am a member of. I am not one who will say something.
to you to your face and turn right around and say something entirely opposite about you behind your back. Well, the Deputy Prime Minister responded to Rollins saying the party fully supports the Prime Minister and his claims about a leadership struggle have no merit. We have but one leader. I fully support but one leader. That leader is the member for, for, for Sandville. The finger will point only in one direction if the truth is asked about who questions and seeks to undermine the present leadership. Disagreeing in viewpoints is the circumstance of democracy. However, respect, respect must issue from both sides. There's no reasonable point in fanning the flames of controversy on the team. Still on news from the House of Assembly, debate continued today on the Parks and Public Beaches Authority Bill. Carla Palmer has more on what took place in Parliament. Member of Parliament for Cat Island, Rumkey Anderson, Salvador, Deputy Prime Minister responsible for public work.